It is the saddest of duties as I represent the soccer community this morning as we pay tribute to our friend, colleague and teammate, Dr. Charles Nelson Perkins, AO, President of Futsal. Or perhaps, as he would prefer, we are here to honour Charlie, as he was known to us all. Charlie's devotion to futsal and to soccer, and to soccer the world game, is well documented, and his stature in the game is exemplified by the letter received by Futsal Australia from Sepp Blatter, President of FIFA, conveying his condolences and paying tribute to Charlie's contribution to our game. From the time he was introduced to it, soccer became an integral part of his life. He often rationalised his passion about the game as being a great way to break down the national, racial and language barriers. His love of the game was also strengthened by his great empathy with immigrants, the new Australians, the outsiders, with whom he shared this common bond. It was at St Francis's home in Adelaide where he developed an interest in soccer, the sport that gave him his start in life and gave him the initial confidence needed to fight for Aboriginal advancement. Soccer became his gateway into Australia's rapidly developing multicultural society, where he was accepted without question and admired for his skill and ability. Charlie played soccer for the Adelaide Hellas and Adelaide Croatia soccer clubs, for Bishop Auckland in the UK and for Panhellenic in Sydney. Through soccer, Charlie established a financial base that was required to help him matriculate and study for an arts degree at the Sydney University. By the mid to late 60s, Charlie had established a solid reputation as one of the finest soccer players in the country. However, his professional soccer career was tragically curtailed through his illness and subsequent kidney transplant. Charlie became involved with soccer again in 1978 through Johnny Warren, then the first coach of the newly formed Canberra City Soccer Club, and remained its president until 1981. In addition to his presidency, Charlie was also a foundation member of the Canberra City Old Boys. As the name suggests, we weren't exactly novices, but we did play against mostly younger teams in the Canberra League Sixth Division, like the RMC Duntroon Cadets, who would do umpteen laps of the Oval before a match, or we got puffed by simply doing up our bootlaces. But once on the field, we always managed to record handsome wins, with players like Perkins, Cavaliva, Warren and Moulis showing that skill and experience will always beat youthful exuberance and we became champions in the 6th, 5th and 4th divisions. Charlie was always having problems with knees, ankles or feet, but that really stopped him from playing. He mostly ignored the pain and took the field and was an incredible sight as he beat players half his age. Sometimes when the pain became too much and he just couldn't run, he would end up in goals. And even there he showed the class of his football pedigree as he pulled off saves that would make Mark Bosnich proud today. I remember one occasion when the BBC sent a television crew out from England to do a follow-up story on Charlie from his Bishop Auckland days, and they wanted to film him in one of our games. Now, we were mostly well-behaved, but uh, Charlie didn't want to take any chances, and he lectured us extensively on the need to make sure that we were on our impeccable best behaviour. Halfway through the game, there was a scuffle, and it became a minor brawl, and leading the charge was the star subject of the BBC documentary. <laughs> As he defended one of his teammates, that was typical Charlie, loyal, brave, never taking a backward step. That same team also broke some early ground in the gender equity stakes. One of our teammates, Jim Roberts Parkman, was a prominent women's soccer player, and we were short one week. And Charlie asked Aaron to take the field with us, even though we protested that the rules didn't allow women to play in a men's competition. Charlie said, look, she's a better player than half the members of our team, not to mention we're short of a player. Why shouldn't she play? As usual, Charlie was persuasive, and she did play. And we're still waiting for FIFA to catch up with us and deduct our points. <laughs> when Canberra City was going through difficulties some years later, Charlie was once again asked to take on the presidency. And as usual, Charlie answered the call for help and remained president from 1983 to 1987. During this period, Charlie also somehow found time to establish the Nomads soccer team, which was predominantly an Aboriginal team with a couple of us interlopers. It featured players like Johnny Moriarty, Jerry Hill, Neville Perkins, the late Joe Croft, John Janke, Keith Brandy, Terry Capine, Ralph Rigby, and Billy Cooper. Charlie's son, Adam, 
was dragooned in sometimes. And Adam, I know how much it meant to your father whenever you helped us out. Our team probably had more players come through our ranks than any other in the competition. As friends of Charlie's who came to Canberra to visit for the weekend were often drafted in for the game. And they didn't seem to mind as they realised that that was probably the only way that they would catch up with Charlie at that weekend. I remember one weekend when Lionel Rose came to watch a game. And afterwards we were dropping Lionel off at Tuggeron where he was staying with friends, except the friends weren't home. Lionel forgot his keys. So there we were on all fours with Lionel climbing onto our backs, and he was no featherweight by then, to try and get in through a window. When Charlie asked, Lionel, are you sure this is the right house? <laughs> Lionel admitted he wasn't totally sure. <laughs> we just all collapsed laughing, with Charlie looking at all the possible headlines the next day. Perkins and Rose arrested in Tuggerong housebreaking. <laughs> in the mid-80s, Charlie held three, new, three senior positions in soccer. He became president of Futsal Australia in 1985, a position which he held till the current time. He was also president of the ACT Soccer Federation from 1987 to 1989. And in addition, he was also the senior vice president of the Australian Soccer Federation. These positions came to Charlie not because he sought power, but he could never refuse to help his friends in need. Charlie Perkins' contribution to Australian society in general is legendary. That he has been able to contribute in such a significant way to his sporting passion as well is simply incredible. Charlie was demanding, tough and focused. He certainly was not afraid to take hard issues into the public arena. But most of all, beneath his tough public persona, in private, he was a humble man. He was generous to a fault with all his friends, opening his heart and his home for the betterment of all. He was always willing to help, asking nothing in return. He was awarded the Order of Australia in 1987, and in 1999, we inducted Charlie Perkins into the Soccer Canberra Hall of Fame. And in July 2000, Charlie was also inducted into the Soccer Australia Hall of Fame. One of the tragedies of life is that we don't tolerate the giants amongst us. We try to cut them down to our size. We vilify them, we criticize them. We only recognize their greatness when they are gone. I have no doubt whatsoever that future generations will be taught about the legend and the legacies that Charles Nelson Perkins has left our country. My regret is that we as a nation do not enunciate our thanks to Charlie during his lifetime for his giant courage to say things others dared not say, to do things while others only talked, and to fight injustice wherever he found it. I know that Charlie gained a lot of comfort in his darkest hours in 1988 from a poem by Kipling called If. To those of us who thought that Charlie Perkins was a giant, the following extract from an ode to athletes may likewise offer some solace. To be a giant. This has forever been our passion. This desire to be a giant, not to stand on one's shoulders or to have one for a friend, for these may be fortunate things, but to be one. Giants step over areas that seem never ending. They conquer mountains that appear insurmountable. Giants rise above fear, triumph over pain, push themselves and inspire others to be a giant, to do giant things, to take giant steps, to move the world forward. To Charlie's loving family, Eileen, Adam, Rachel, on behalf of the soccer community of Australia,